Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming for this session. And my name is Ming Duan. I work for Fujikura Limited in South Carolina. My presentation will be um, the miniature CMOS based imaging solution. I understand probably uh, most of you just had lunch. I will go through this presentation very quickly. If you have any questions during the presentation, um, uh, you can either ask me or wait for the end of the session. Um, this, is a, this is the outline of uh, the topics I'm gonna cover. I will start with endoscopy historic perspective, just give you a very quick review what kind of imaging technologies have been used in the endoscope products. And then I give you a very quick um, review of the CMOS technology, followed by the CMOS based imaging module. What I like to present to you today uh, is to present you the features and the benefits that can be provided by the miniature CMOS based imaging solutions. Let's start with the endoscope historic perspective. Imagine in, at the origin of the endoscopes, doctors usually just use natural body openings with a cyst of mirrors or rigid instruments to examine the inside of the body. Because of the size and limitations by those um, instruments, Please join us for a complimentary welcome reception beginning at 4 o'clock to 5.30 today in the lower level of Hall E. The reception is open to both attendees and exhibitors, and we look forward to seeing you there. Excuse me. Because of the limitations of those is instruments and the limitations of the body openings, typically the areas doctors can go into are very limited. Usually it's limited in the throat, or the lower colon and the rectum. Then with the introduction of the fiber optic instruments, that had broadened the range of the endoscopic procedures and, the and the enabling doctors to examine more part of the body, such as the duodenal ulcers. With the introduction of CCD cameras, this brings a very flexible viewing of the entire column. And procedures can be conducted through endoscopes. When we move to the CMOS camera era, because of the size and many other benefits CMOS can provide, this makes even more miniature devices possible because of the low cost at, a high, at very high volume for CMOS technology, this makes the disposable scopes available. The CMOS technology is basically a IC chip circuitry that integrated circuitry components as well as photo detectors and digitalized the circuits all assembled into one chip. And on, based on the CMOS chip, it allows each pixel on the chip to convert the incoming light into voltage and finally into digital data. Compared to the CCD camera technology and the, the fiber optic te technologies, the CMOS technology consumes less power and it could have a high performance at low cost. And it can have a good resolution with a very dynamic sensitivity. And the other benefit is it can be made very, very small. And I'm gonna pass around um, a module based on the CMOS chip to the audience next. This is a diagram showing you, on the left side of the diagram is a CMOS chip, which we, thank you, 
which is with the enlarged picture. And the right side of diagram, if you look at the, the middle part of it, the blue rectangular part of it, that is the CMOS chip. In front of the CMOS chip, you can assemble a lens. And on the back end, usually people will start with electronic circuitry. In this case, we used flexible printed circuit followed by very, very thin coaxial wires. So the electric wires will lead all the signals from the CMOS chip to the back end connector, which will be then connected to an interface board. On this board, you may have a lot of uh, signal processing fu functions here. So this diagram is a conceptual CMOS imaging module structure. The next slide gives you an actual picture of the CMOS module, which is also the example I passed around. This is a distal tip with the optic lens, and this is the electric wires, coaxial cables, which can run up to four meters long. And the back end, you may have a connector which allows you to connect it to an interface board. And this is the size comparison to a pencil tip. The key module assembly techniques involve with optic design, which um, is mostly in the distal end of it, and the scope assembly technologies. As uh, some of you may know or may have used the endoscopes, endoscopes will re require the embedded the lighting system. We can, as you can imagine, we can use the CMOS module as the basic building block along with the light guide, and you can build it into a scope. Another key technology is um, manufacturer or assembler house need to know, need to have a know-how technologies of size minimal, minimalization. Because nowadays, CCD cameras have been very widely used and with very, very high resolutions. In order to bring the features the CMOS uniquely presents, people need to know how you can make it even smaller to get into the areas where the four to five millimeter CCD cameras cannot get into. This chart gives you some CMOS module examples. The left block is based on a chip of Fujikura Generation 2. This is a 170 by 170 pixel chip. The chip size is less than one millimeter. Pixel size is a 2.2 micron. Dynamic range is a 60 dB. And the other example is based on the chip made by OmniVision OV6930. Resolution is 400 by 400 pixels with the pixel size 1.1 by 1.1. As you see, the more pixels you increase, the chip size also increased. But because of the increase the pixel, this, this chip based on the scope definitely will give you much higher resolution and a better image quality than this module. The one that I'm passing into the audience is based on the left side module. It's based on the 170 by 170 pixel CMOS chip. And you can see the overall OD diameter of that sample is around 1.2 millimeter, which, which cannot be achieved by the OV chip because the chip size itself is already 1.8 millimeter. However, it depends on the final applications. Some applications may be very critical about image qualities some applications may only require some color distinction. So 
depends on the application, you may start with choose the right chip and the right module size. This slide is a comparison of the CMOS-based imaging tool compared to the conventional CCD and the fiber bundle. In the endoscope applications, some people using the leached bundle for the flexible endoscopes. In other cases, such as the rigid um, atheroscopes, people using um, silica-based imaging bundles for the endoscope applications. So if we look at uh, the benefits of using CMOS, we, we can look at it uh, from sensitivity, flexibility, and those features we can compare to them. This chart is the many compare the CMOS versus the CCD. Sensitivity and flexibility. <clears throat> as far as sensitivity, the CMOS is better than the CCD. Resolution, CMOS is better than fiber bundle. The fiber bundle is limited by usually for the rigid one is about 100,000 pixels. And for the CCD, you can get much higher pixel. For the image quality, image quality, the CMOS is catching up with the CCDs. As far as the power consumption, the CMOS is uh, using much significantly lower power. And as far as the billing of material components, based on the CMOS, it has much smaller BOM than the CCD systems. And lastly, as far as the cost, if you go to very high volume applications, CMOS can be a very good candidate, especially in the cases people are trying to avoid sterilization, re-sterilization. CMOS can offer a very economic solution for disposable devices. On the left side, there were some pictures taken by the 20, by the 170 by 170 pixel CMOS camera. So this leads to the end of this presentation. CMOS technology has and will be continued to be advanced to enable the smaller module size with a better performance and capabilities. Because of the CMOS is very integrated system, it can make faster time to market for the device manufacturers. It has much less billing of material than the CCD cameras. Because of the low cost and the volume, CMOS based uh, endoscopes can provide a disposable solution for the medical imaging solutions. That's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I want to also to mention that we have a CMOS module demonstration at the booth number 1999. In the upper level, not very far from this aisle. And besides the 170 by 170 pixel, we also have an Omnivision chip based 400 by 400 pixel CMOS module display over there. So please feel free to, uh, to go up and check the CMOS imaging quality. Thank you. Yes, go Hi. ahead. I've got a question is... Um, Sorry, I cannot hear you. CMOS, one of the challenges I'm facing is when we talk to illumination as infrared, um, the efficiency of the CMOS conversion to photon to electron is quite low, so it's really hard to capture images. Uh, that's one thing that we find that CCD always gives us better quality of the image in the IR range. Because in that case, you can penetrate the skin and see uh, the blood vessel behind it. Could you say your question again? In order to see through skin or internal endoscope, beyond the surface, you can illuminate with infrared. So you can see through the, you can see below the skin levels. Uh, one of the challenges I have with CMOS is the infrared conversion efficiency of the sensor is not high enough. 
I and I always get better instead of using the CCD cameras for that reason. Oh. So I, will, I will give it more improvement if your Gen 2 product. So you are saying that with the CMOS, you will see some IR? You are more difficult to see IR. I see. Um, do you have IR lighting? Okay. Usually people using the visible lighting and um, I have no um, knowledge about using the IR. I think it's the pulse to actually measure for your fingers. I see. And they're actually using infrared to see those things. I see. So this is a little bit um, different than the traditional endoscope application. You are more talking about the sensing application, isn't it? No, we want to see the blood vessel inside what behind the wall. Imaging through the blood, yeah. right? No, no. You basically blast with a lot of power of infrared. Okay. And then you put a filter in front and you just take the infrared reflection of the background so you can see the blood vessel behind it. It would be good that um, with this feedback, maybe good to collaborate with some CMOS scope or CMOS module manufacturing and collaborate with some testing, gathering the data in that specific area. I have not seen any data that generated about the IR range illuminations. Sorry. Any other questions, please? Yeah, uh, what, kind of what kind of applications of this endoscope? For your for your for the product you, you, you are showing around, what kind of uh, applications? Applications. Yeah, is it for the the endos like a coloscope or for the heart operation or for? I would say that uh, for applications, well, the traditional CCG cameras, three to four millimeter diameter, cannot get access to. Uh, you can go to with a CMOS based. You can go to a smaller area, which is harder to reach. Okay. For example, uh, the uh, in, in the intubation processes, people okay. can, in, can go into there. Or other applications is where people find disposable endoscope brings a lot of benefit. OK. Yeah, I have some other questions. Well, it's like, uh, in this slide, you say this uh, OD is 1.8 millimeter. Uh, yeah, but in the previous slide you said OD is 1.2 millimeter, which is a... Uh, yes, it uh, depends on what is included in that OD. As far as the CMOS module itself, without illumination guide, we can make the CMOS module 1.2 millimeter. However, with the illumination guide, lighting guide, um, the diameter will be increased more than the CMOS module by itself. Okay. For the lens, you're showing around? Is there a lens, uh, is there a single lens or, or multiple lens? Uh, depends on the, the field of view uh, and the walking distance you want to see. For, you, typically, for anything field of view bigger than 75 degree, people using multi-component lens, multi-piece lens. OK, well, it's so this for the lens you're just showing, is there, is there a Field of view is bigger or low, slower? It's kind of in the high end. In the high end? Yeah, 100 or 90 degree. It's on the high end. People are using the micro lens, multi piece lens. Use micro lens? Yes. You mean like fiber optics type, green lens type? It's not a green lens, it, uh, it's composed of multi groups, multi piece. Okay. okay. Okay, what's the cost of it? When you say, uh, yeah, yeah, you keep on saying it's a low cost. Uh, yeah, but uh, I just was wondering how much does it cost? Uh, to, give a, to give a ballpark number for the cost, um, for example, if uh, a device quantity is about 100,000 pieces a year, the cost of the CMOS module could be in the range of $120. $120. That's in, that includes the lens, right? That includes the lens, including the optical parts, the uh, presented by this picture. The distal end optical parts, the coaxial cables, okay, and we okay. call that CMOS thing, module. Whole thing, but is it disposable? 
Is it disposable? When we say disposable, usually it's plastic, made of plastic, right? Usually the uh, disposable or not, is, uh, it depends on how you want to spend the money to sterilize it. If you, and it depends on your sterilization method. Uh, yeah. For the ETO, um, we can make the sheath material that's ETO compatible for single use, ETO sterilization. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much for coming, and uh, I welcome you to our booth at 1999. Thank you very much. <laughs>